Throughout the history of mankind, only 10% of the ocean has been explored. We know more of space than we know of what's in the ocean. We know that we've only scratched the surface of underwater exploration. The amount of technological advancement when it comes to mapping out or navigating our way through the underwater is very limited. In an unfortunate event that a vessel of any kind was to sink in a vast unknown body of ocean, it could pose a very difficult task of finding it. And it is to my dismay that it did happen. For those who haven't heard of this news yet, this is what happened. A submersible from Ocean Gate Expeditions, a privately owned underwater exploration company from Everett, Washington, was to set out to explore the shipwreck of the Titanic in the Atlantic Ocean, 400 miles off Newfoundland. There are a total of five passengers on board this submersible. Businessman and explorer Hamish Harding, maritime expert and Titanic researcher Paul Henri Nargelet, father and son Shazada and Suleiman Dawood, and the captain and CEO of Ocean Gate Expeditions, Stockton Rush. After many delays due to bad weather conditions, they have set a schedule for a dive. By 6 a.m. Sunday morning, they started their descent to the Titanic's wreckage, a trip that would take them two and a half hours to reach their destination. All was going according to their plan until an hour and 45 minutes of their descent, all signals of the sub was lost. The crew members of the Polar Prince, the main ship that carried the submersible out into the ocean, has no communication whatsoever, and the only possible reason for the loss of signal is a power loss. Statements from their crew and engineers have said that the missing sub is capable of triggering an emergency function that could help them return to the surface. But in the event that the sub was for some reason not able to return to the surface, the sub was housed with an emergency tank that could give them a surplus of oxygen for a total of 96 hours. With that in mind, from the time they have been submerged and the oxygen supply they have, they have a total of 4 days until Thursday morning when all access to oxygen depletes. Upon this horrible news, authorities from the US and Canadian Coast Guards and the Navy together with other commercial rescue teams have been rapidly deployed to search the area. No definite statement has been said by Ocean Gate Expeditions crew as to why they lost signal to the sub, which could have been a great help in the investigation of finding out what really happened. The only information that they have been able to give the area where it happened and the depth of the search area. Imagine finding a 20 feet long submersible in an area of 10,000 square meters and a depth of 3,800 meters. A literal quest of finding a needle in a haystack. On that missing Titanic submersible. Titanic wreck is intensifying. Time is running out. Oxygen is running out. Those search efforts have not yielded any results. On Thursday morning, the Canadian Horizon Arctic vessels, ROVs, have discovered debris fields on the seafloor consistent with the parts of the missing Ocean Gate submersible. This was a tragic and unfortunate use for the five souls and their families. I can't even imagine what their family are going through right now. Our deepest thoughts and prayers go to the families and the victims. Further investigations are still being conducted, but this already was bringing up a lot of questions and concerns regarding to what led to this tragic event. One of the most glaring questions to this is what went wrong. A disclaimer, all the issues presented are not a conspiracy. The issues that I'm about to show you are from credible sources and reports, and it's based on the information that is currently available. Problem number one, the submersible was not ready for any harsh underwater conditions. One of the thrusters is thrusting backwards right now. Many have speculated and suggested that the sub might have collided with the Titanic, as the submersible is not capable of moving very well with its limited propulsions, and like many submersible, it cannot withstand strong underwater currents. So what are underwater currents? Now these ocean currents are like strong winds underwater and can vary depending on the depth, the difference in pressures, weather conditions, and various external factors. These currents are sometimes unpredictable and could go as strong as 8 knots. A strong enough current could have caused them to collide with the shipwreck and sustain catastrophic damage leading to the incident. 
people might think this might be possible because it already happened to another diving expedition in a similar incident with Dr. Michael Gillen. Dr. Michael Gillen together with the Russian submersible exploration team got swept in one of these currents and ended up getting entangled in the Titanic's propeller. But luckily in their case, after a while they were able to break free. But that may not be what happened in this case because according to the Horizon Arctic's ROV data, the debris field that could have possibly belonged to the Ocean Gate submersible was found 1,600 feet away from the Titanic wreckage. Another factor that points out that this may not be possible is because upon their descent, communication was lost halfway from even reaching the wreckage, implying the incident had already happened way before they could reach the seafloor. Number 2. Communication Problems Communication is crucial in any dive, given that the sub had very limited visibility in the pitch black ocean floor and had to rely on the main ship on the surface for directions. In one of the documentary for the expedition to one of these dives, some of the passengers of the submersible did sometimes lose contact to the surface. Some of the passengers even stated that this kind of occurrence isn't uncommon. Mechanical problems are par for the course, happens all the time. The communication somehow broke down. The sub never found the wreck. We were lost. We were lost for two and a half hours. The submersible was equipped with an acoustic link with its surface vessel, which uses sound to keep track of their location, as well as for short text messages to be sent back and forth to the surface vessel. Unfortunately, both would become unusable in the case of a power loss. Even if in the slightest chance that the submersible did not implode and only lost its communication, locating the Titan in that situation would still be a very difficult task. Problem number three unregulated and questionable features. There have been many rising concerns on the submersible design features from having an improvised Logitech controller as the main control for the propulsions to the many disregarded safety regulations that they were not able to comply. Despite these concerns, the company was still able to conduct 200 dives since 2018. Though not approved or certified by any regulation, it is even reported that two former employees of the company in Ocean Gate Expeditions also warned them that the vessel was unsafe for deep ocean exploration. It was later founded that the company Ocean Gate also received 36 notices from regulatory bodies about the dangers of not following submarine and submersible standards. In an inspection, it was even referred as, and I quote, an experimental submersible. Unfortunately, rules were not followed and risks were taken. The unregulated sub also came with some rather questionable design features. Like in the event that the submersible does go up to the surface, unlike in other traditional submarines, the hatch can only be opened from the outside. So even if they are in the surface, they would still have no access to oxygen. And in that event, it is still, however, catastrophic for the passengers. When a lot of precautionary measures were not followed, it opens up a lot of possibilities, both human and technical errors that could have caused the incident. Essentially, a lot of things could go wrong. However, all of this was mentioned in the waiver that they were required to sign. An experimental submersible vessel that has not been approved or certified by any regulatory body and could result in physical injury, disability, emotional trauma, or death. Where do I sign? In relation to having consent, another concerning aspect to this is that regulation isn't really strictly imposed once you're outside territorial waters, meaning the area where this operation happened is far from any jurisdiction that governs regulation regarding safe practices of deep sea explorations. Though there is an actual treaty from the United Kingdom and the US that aims to preserve the Titanic wreckage by regulating its access specifically saying that the US and the UK have the power to grant people entering the hull sections of the Titanic and removing artifacts found inside. This law was only limited to the United States and the United Kingdom and only specified the permits to enter the hull and not around it. Problem number four, submersible pressure integrity. And finally, to what may have ultimately cost the lives of five souls on board was pressure chamber integrity. The recommend diving capabilities of submarines for both commercial and military is around 1,000 feet. According to the documents, the submersible is made of carbon fiber and titanium, a material that's not commonly used in submersible due to the lack of testing. 
though the document stated that this material can withstand deep ocean pressure up to 4,000 meters. The viewport window's integrity, which is arguably the most sensitive part of the vessel, was a major concern for David Lockridge. David was an expert on submarines and conducted inspection for the Ocean Gate Titan. But once his questions were raised about the window's integrity, in his own words, he was met with hostility and was denied of this kind of documentation when conducting inspection. And he was later ignored. In Lockridge certification, the window could only withstand pressure as deep as 1,300 meters. The missing submersible, though they lost the signal at 2,700 meters, they were supposedly going to reach 3,800 meters. At that depth, they would have to withstand a pressure of approximately 380 times more pressure than on the surface. And of course, this wasn't their first time reaching the Titanic wreckage, but out of all the dives, every dive could potentially degrade the submersible's durability little by little, leading to an even greater damage after repeated attempts. And on the day that the debris fields were found, according to the Coast Guard's report, a sudden catastrophic implosion of the vessel is likely the cause of the incident. Uh, the debris is consistent with a catastrophic uh, implosion of uh, the vessel.